Hello, my name is Ken, and this video is part one of building the Scottish motor fishing vessel Fifey. And uh, part one is going to be dealing with the planking. It took me a long time to get this planked up. I have the boat planked here, and I'll give you a couple close ups to it. And uh, then this part two will be about working on the deck. And uh, you can see here I haven't got much deck work, deck work done or any actually. So uh, let's get right to it. So the process I elected to use was to make my, uh, my strakes, which is a series of uh, planks along here, to go fore and aft, straight back and forth without any steelers or add or drop planks. And uh, that's a little bit different than the instructions, so I had to do a little bit of inventing. The top part is to be unpainted per the, inst per, uh, the instructions, and then the bottom is to be colored. And so, in other words, since these are going to be natural and sealed, I decided to make those planks as thick as possible. And the same here on the bottom where you can see them. But in the middle here, where the um, there's going to be painted, I've had to shorten these down, narrow these down, so that they would uh, all go fit fore and aft. So that's the trick I used. There's quite a few planks on here. There's 28 strakes, probably on the order of 75 individual planks on each side. And this is a double plank boat, so there's a there's 300 planks or so to be added on. And uh, I really wanted to make these top parts without any gaps or uh, need any filler because this is going to be unsealed. Down here, I was a little, I still have a few gaps I was going to seal and paint. So I'm not quite done, but uh, this is the product I've got so far and the result of part one. Part two hasn't been done yet, so let's go into the making of part one, and then later this year I will release part two. <clears throat> well, welcome to another boat building session. This time I'm excited to build a fishing boat. This is a really cool looking boat. The Scottish Fifi. It was active in the 1850s up to the 1900s. It's a net fishing boat, mostly herring. You can tell me... And you can tell one of these features is, is it has a vertical bow and stern. Stern's over here, upside down for me. And uh, it's got some really neat deck equipment, nice planking for the hull, double planking. So I'm looking forward to building this. It'll be a good exercise. I like the colors of the boat. It's just got some great gear, quality, a quality build. So let's take a look and see what's inside. Yeah, it's got a nice manual. Lots of uh, pictures with a few key words in here and how each one of those comes to be assembled. Looks like it's got an MDF keel. I've never worked with one of those before. It's a fairly heavy, heavy kit here. And um, a lot of good parts in there. It's a double plank, so this must be the first layer and then some nice, you know, some kind of mahogany for the second layer. Lots of quality looking deck gear in here. I don't know if you can see that now. There we go. Some quality looking deck gear in here. Here's our prop. And so, without further ado, let's get, let's get to building this. Found my parts. I got them all in here. But I begin to worry about my dowels. I was not sure I wanted to use the wrong dowels and have come up short. So what I did was... Let's examine all these drawings they have here. So they made a sketch here of all the things that will require dowels. The masts, the booms, and some railings. And then I took a look at all the dowels they provided me. One eight millimeters, three six millimeters, two three millimeters. And mapped in the desired length of each one of these into the dowels provided so I would have the make the proper cuts and it would all line up good. So now that I've got that done, we can start cutting, or I'm going to start cutting, on these 20 millimeter dowels so I can put the keel together. But looking at all these drawings was kind of fun. There's going to be a lot of deck work associated with this. I think most of this um, exercise is going to be all about making some very nice, meticulous, good-looking hatches and brass winches and so forth. This is going to be different than the other ones. They don't focus too much on the keel or on the planking or on the sails. It's more deck work. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. The instructions were pretty clear about how to assemble the keel together and this little riser here for the stern. And so I did put it together. And then I sanded 
the edges for all the frames and uh, beveled the fore and aft frames so that when I put the planks on it'll be somewhat smooth and uh, then I dry fit them together. So I assembled the hull assembly per the instructions. It was pretty straightforward. Pounding these nails here in was kind of tricky. The clamps held it down. I pounded the nails in, but I sort of missed the beam a couple times. I drew some lines, but somehow along the way it didn't quite work. So sometimes I had to pound two or three nails in to, to hit that little beam underneath. And I got the, the nails held and the glue was dry, but there's a couple extras in here. And sometimes they went too far, so they're going to be a little tricky pulling out. And then you got to push really hard with these, with this pin pusher. I've ordered a pair of pliers, but it hasn't showed up. But when you push real hard, it, it would strain my clamper here. So I had to lay it on the table and I pushed hard. Now I was afraid I was going to strain something or break it, but it worked. And I pounded it in with a little hammer to get a little further in and that worked. And another aspect was, is you had to put these, um, these parts here, I forget what they call them, but therefore when the frame comes around, it gives you something to, to attach to shims kind of affair. And I got them uh, sanded down pretty good, so I think they're going to come around. And then next, I also have to, you see this better, I also have to sand these down here so that when the, when the, the um, planks come along here, this sharp edge will be gone. So I gotta, still got to sand that. But anyway, so now I'm getting ready to start planking. So now that I have this all assembled and ready to go, I cut a couple of prototype planks here and I uh, laid them on here and, and um, I had a little bit of issues. I did some more sanding and I decided to put a rabbit, a groove along here and along the bottom so that when the planks go on board, they will fit into this groove and make a very nice smooth surface here and along the bottom as well. So I put a rabbit on both sides fore and aft. So here I am into my planking process. The instructions said to use these quite long planks and uh, lay them along the boat like this and then cut a little piece and put it on the end. And that probably is okay for an underlayment, but I thought I would practice what you do if you had a single row of planks and you wish to mimic what a boat is doing. Is you use uh, shorter planks representing the lumber of the day, like a 2 by 10 maybe 10 feet long to 30 feet long would be about what they'd have. And so then you stagger where the butts line up on these frames in a four-butt scheme, like what was discussed in that planking tutorial that I took earlier. And so here I am. I've done that. I've cut these little short ones, and I've laid them up here. There's a butt here, and there's a one there, and there's one over here. And I'm going to go all the way down, and there's my first four. And this is going to be quite a long process because I think there's 25 planks to a side. And if you take a look at the rabbit groove, you can see my planks fit right in there pretty good. And then that will make for a nice smooth transition in the bow and along the, the bottom of the keel. At least I'm hoping so. I decided I wanted to make this video shorter than my previous ones. And therefore I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on planking. There's a lot of good planking tutorials out there that are better skilled than I am. But I did find another technique rather than spiling to put these boats together. And so I thought I would spend a little time. And you can see I'm almost done with one side and I'm halfway through on the other side. And I'll show you this noodle of technique I've used that's much quicker. What I learned from these individuals online is you lay your plank flat like this and where it starts to deviate up where you want to curve you put a little circle on the plank, and then you need to track which way you bend it. I put a little arrow up there like that. And then, where the circle is, you lay a little fulcrum right there, and you lay something on top of that to keep it flat, and you clamp it down. Yes, you can see that. And you clamp the other end down, so it lays flat. Then you take some water and you spread it on there. I got a little dish of water that I've been using to spread it on there. And then you bend this down and you clamp this end. And then when it's all wet, you wet it again. You iron it and it gets hot and it steams, but you don't have, and you can bend it edgewise, which seemed to be a little odd, but I tried it and it worked. And you can probably put only so much of a bend. So in some of these boats I've seen where there's a real big curve, you probably have to spile. 
and I'm okay with that. I've gotten good at spiling. But if you can put a little bend in here, clamp it down, steam it with an iron, and you let go, it fits up there perfectly. And let me show you how that looks. So here we go. I decided with a little circle I need a fulcrum here and this needs to bend down a little bit in the stern, towards the stern, really the middle of the boat. This is where the big bend starts, so I'm going to bend this whole fend a little bit. And then I decided it needs an extra little bend on the bow, so once I get this down, I'm going to put a second little bend. So these two are pinned down. You pretty much, uh, you can see here, I laid the fulcrum there, then I lay a piece on top so it doesn't, so it lays flat. And then you splash a little water on there like I've been doing all along. And on this end as well. And then you bend this down some. Lay that so I don't mark the wood. And there's my first bend. Now this is where I want a, an additional bend. So I lay this on here to hold that. And then bend it a little further. Just kind of got a compound bend. It really isn't this strong a bend. Oh, and I got to do this in too while I'm at it. Where's my, uh, here's my other clamp. Bend this one down. Where's my little uh, holder? Yeah, I keep track of all these bits and pieces. Sometimes I think they're scrap. I throw them away. I don't know. We'll call this good. Oh, here it is. Bend this down. And I don't know if I need to or not, but I always wet it one more time because my iron's good and hot. When I wanted to hold this down, I should have done that sooner. This will be all right. And then you iron it. My wife wasn't too happy with me using her iron, so I bought a travel iron. I ended up getting this big thing. The guy on the web showed an actual small travel iron, but this one works. It wasn't too expensive. 25 bucks or something and uh, you kind of hold it on and if you look at that link you'll see it doesn't have to be too long I haven't looked at it for a while I just figured I let it um, be what makes sense to me I iron it over and over and over just I imagine to get steam as much as anything and my process is to unplug the iron before I forget <sighs> And then do it one more time while it's still hot. And then, once you've done what you think you need to do for bending, you let it cool a little bit. I don't know, a couple of minutes. That's about all I let it go. And it should have this bend in there, and it sure is a lot shorter. Look at this, all done. Spiling takes forever. Got a much bigger curve. And I did the stern as well while I was at it. <clears throat> and. When you lay this up here like this, and sure enough, it looks like it fits pretty good. That kind of fits there. Yep, that'll go in there good. So the other little trick I've used is using nails. I don't know if you can see them here to to put these pieces of wood in. But I got this from Micromark. Let me turn this around. I got this from Micromark, a nail pusher. It's got a little groove in there, and this nail fits right in there. You can hang on to them. When you get it in the groove, it's pretty steady, and that lets you push and pull it, as opposed to hammering or some of these other cheaper nail pushers. And a little bit of glue on the tip, and then I don't know if you can see this. Let's zoom in a little bit. I get that tip put in and I pound that nail and glue and then I hold it because that's got quite of a bend in there and it'll pop right out. The end of that wood splits pretty easy. And then I lay glue on these three or four planks depending upon how I feel and lay this in and then if you can see <clears throat> the rest of it hasn't been done yet. I just put the first four in and I, I got a little bit of a gap here. Later on I'm putting on the second layer of planks. I came across the same gap in that area of the boat 
and he determined that it has to do with the curvature of the hull. It's a very sharp and odd corner there, and that's what the source was, not sanding or anything else. And I dealt with it better in my second layer of planking. There wasn't such a gap there, but I did struggle with it. And I would worry about this more, but this is an underlayer, so I'm going to sand this smooth, fill it a little bit, and then put on these um, mahogany planks on top. And here, I'll get a little bit more sticky. That'll lay over, double planking. And I'll have to do a closer job, but I'm... It's got like 50 planks on each, 25 planks on each side, 50 planks. That's a lot. It's taking me forever. I'm getting a little bit plank weary. So I'm just going to go through this, and uh, being that it's an underlayer, I'm not going to worry too much. I worried more about up here, and I got some good lessons learned in, but now I'm just trying to bang my way through it. Now I'm going to trim this end over here. I put this on before. See, a lot of these guys are pretty tight. I'm a little disappointed, maybe because I have the camera on, and I've been trying to get this video done at the same time. This is a little bit more of a gap than I like, but I'm going to live with it. But anyway, so I'm going to trim this off very carefully offline and put that on and move on. And there, there is the final. That uh, new plank was put on right here. These nails are holding it pretty good. I decided after taking a look at this, this gap is because I did some uneven sanding. I think I sanded too many tenths of a millimeter away, so I found in the past what I've done is put some glue between the planks, not on the frames, which is a little bit different. But that's what I did, and then I pinched it together. I put a piece of wood in the back and a piece of wood in the front, held them together, and I think this will end up drying and the gap won't be so big. Again, I rely on the fact that it's underlayment because I have other issues, as you can see here. And, um, but uh, not being so careful on the sunder lane. Doesn't look too bad though. I'm quite actually happy with it. But there's my new technique. I got a uh, edge bending with an iron and a new nail puller or pusher that put these on and I glue them. And one by one, I'm custom, these, custom fitting these frames in. And it's a long, weary road. I'm taking about, I was doing about three hours of plank, a whole end to end, like a plank and a quarter. But now i got it down to about an hour per plank. And i got to slow down to make sure I don't get too carried away and make more mistakes. But uh, as I get near the end, i got to see how this comes together. Will it be a nice one plank through, or am I going to have, you know, a sliver of a plank? I don't know where I'm going. Let's give that a try and see how it looks. This has been a beast of a boat plank. There's like 25 planks on each side. And the original, the planks they give us, let me see, this has been a tough boat to plank. The planks they give us are 600 millimeters, but you can see they don't quite come to the end. So you have to cut some of them. And so that's what I'm doing. I got this side sort of done. This is the first layer. And I'm working on the last little bit. I think I got about seven more. And the one I just bent is meant to fit right here on the bow. And that's what I've been doing. Put little ones on the side here and then put the ones flat. And these went pretty smooth, but here's where the curve is. And that's where all of the, the bending is required, right here in the bow. The, the stern's not too bad, but the bow has been really tough to make. And uh, I'm just about finished with these 25. Then I sand it flat and I do it again. A lot of planking. Let's see how this fits. I haven't tried it yet. <clears throat> Looks like that'll fit right on there. I like it. Here's how I've been doing it.
I find this little edge lifts up, so I, I don't know if you can see this, I hope so. Put this piece on here and clamp it down, it holds it in place. Nice little nail pusher. This is the way to go. I'll let that set for an hour and then I'll come back and trim this end off right here and go for the last little piece. So there it is. Sometimes if there's a little, this is going to have to be sanded down. This would never do for the first layer. Yeah, it might. You can sand it down, but there's going to be the second, the bottom layer. So I need a little short one because they bend. Now the next piece, in theory, will fit the whole way. Yeah. You put that on there, you see it's got a little bit of an edge bend, so we'll just edge bed that up like I did. Alright, I'm kind of excited. After about 75 to 100 pieces of wood, I've got the first layer done, except for this last piece. And it looks like... going to fit right in. Now there's some still some little gaps here and there and that's okay this is the first layer. Next thing to do will be to sand this. Get it smooth, fill in some of these gaps and prepare to start to lay the final layer down. The gaps will be more important or the lack of the gaps will be more important on the final layer. I said before, this being the first layer, we don't have to be too particular. I did practice on this upper layer doing a shift butt where the lengths of planks are too long and they're put together pretty tight. And it's also pretty straight. And there's not too many cracks or holes or uh, misalignments here. So this could be sanded and almost be a first layer, not quite. And I did the same on the first couple planks along the garboard and up a little bit. Very careful shift button everything, but there's so many planks I decided to race through the rest, race being like a, a month or four or five weeks. And I kind of put these in and here's where all of a sudden the, the curvature made a difference. And so I do have some gaps, I don't know how well they show here on the video, but um, the first layer caused me just to say let's just get through this because the second layer will probably be not quite so tough. And I did, I put it together and then I sanded it and it looks pretty good. It's a pretty smooth now. The question I have is how smooth is smooth? And for you guys online who think that uh, this is going to be some kind of professional video, I'm just an amateur and I'm working through it and I have questions. And For me it's experience and so I'm just building it. Probably not the best way but it's good enough for me. But the question I have is, is how smooth is smooth? Because you take these second layer walnut planks and you lay them on there and if there is a little bit of roughness, I would assume these guys would just cover them up. we got the same thing going on here, though, an edge bend. We're going to have to bend these up a little bit without the curvature. And so I have a fair amount of casts. The same thing. The plank does not go the whole length, so there'll, there'll be some addition on the end. And I decided not to use the whole plank. This time I'm going to do little lengths of plank, the whole affair. Uh, as if in the day, the planks don't get much over 30 feet which is what these frames allow, uh, 15, 20, 15, 30, something like that. And I'll put this all the way down, and uh, I think I got a little bit more sanding. I still see some roughness, but I'm not sure how smooth it has to be. So it doesn't look too bad. I, you can't really tell on the camera. I can still feel a little bit, 
but I don't, I don't think it makes a difference. I think when I put these two side by side, they butt up to one another. It looks like it's going to work. So I'll go a little more, a little more carefully and get this done, and then I will start the planking process. In fact, I'll get this smoothed up, and then I'll come to the other side and sand it, and then or probably I'll fill it first, and then sand it, and get it equal to this side, and then I'll start the planking. So there's still a fair amount of work left to do on this planking business. So I finished sanding both sides. I you know, filled and sanded and filled and sanded, and I got it much better. So I've decided that's enough. I got both sides done. All sanded and smooth. A little bit of roughness, but that's okay. So now we're going to start to put on a false skeel here. Glue these on. And then start laying the planks. So I've started with my uh, final layer, the mahogany planks. And I've got uh, six planks laid on top and three planks laid on the bottom. And I'm, I'm quite happy with the progress I'm making. Um, they're all fairly tight. I'm happy about that. There's not very many gaps. They're filling into this rabbit quite nicely. And uh, what's left to do, these planks here are going to require some kind of tapering. Um, these are, I think I'm going to keep the upper planks natural wood, seal them or um, coat them. But they'll be showing natural wood, and there'll be a white stripe along the bottom as shown in the photographs and the manual, and then a red bottom. So the bottom part of this is going to be painted. And so I can have a little few gaps down here and use some, some filler and fill them in and, and sand them. And, and it won't show so much in the paint, and especially where the bottom kind of does a sharp curve under here, that may not show as well or show as much. But up here, this is going to be really where everybody can see it. So nice and tight is what I wanted, and I have. And I'm happy with that. But now i got to start this, um, this tapering process. And in addition, um, I was using tight bond wood glue for these planks down here with nails, little small nails to hold them on while the glue dried. But I didn't want to put nails in this top layer. And clamps only work for two layers down, and then the clamps didn't reach, they'd all get cattywampus. And because I wanted them squeezed close together, I was wondering how that works. And the instructions said to use CA glue, which I've had trouble with once you put it on, it's hard to get off. But I uh, researched and decided that's what I'm going to do, so I bought this, um, this uh, extra thick, takes 30 seconds to cure time. And I thought, well, I'll give that a try. So I put a couple dabs of CA glue along, and I lay a bit of a plank, and then I could set it up and push it up with my fingers and push this end down in here. After about 25 seconds, it was done, and actually it worked quite good. I'm quite happy using CA glue. I left a lot of my skin on the boat, but um, I got better at using not too much glue, using less glue. And it actually came out real good. I'm, I'm happy. So I'll continue using CA glue the rest of the way. And uh, I don't know where this uh, natural wood ends and the white stripes start, so that's probably be my next research. But in theory, it won't be too much lower than this, and so I'll uh, put a couple of more slightly tapered and then some heavily tapered wood here. And uh, that'll all be down below underneath and under the paint, and so it'll be a little bit more forgiving. This took quite a bit of effort to get this nice tight bond here. Another thing is, if you remember, I, built, I cut a rabbit into the keel, so that when the false keel glues on, there would be a gap there. And sure enough, here is a, a little trial piece of wood, and I lay it in there, and it fits pretty close. Let me zoom in. And it, if you push it down, hold it in, it actually fits quite, quite nice and gives you a nice sharp line right along here. But in some areas, some areas, my underlayment raised up kind of a bit. Like I can see this coming here. When you put this... Um, trial piece in here and lay it in it sticks up as an edge so I've been carving and sanding this wood so that it would receive this in a nice flush manner 
So I'll have a little bit of work. I think I'm good for a while, and then as it gets thicker down here, or stands up a little bit, I'm going to have to carve some of that away, and at the same fore and aft. So I lay this on here, and I put it on upside down, so all my markings on the bottom, so that I don't have to erase it. Here's frame one, two, three, and four. That kind of gives me the approximation of where I want them. And then I use my calipers. Upside down, please. And I mark my frames 4.46 at the beginning and 4.1. So it might be kind of hard to see here, but you, I'll talk to it and you can, you might be able to understand. So it's upside down, so I'm marking on the back and I made a little indentation with my calipers on the back so when I flip it around it won't show too much, so I'll erase these here. And on the back I made a little indentation for my 4.46, 4.1, 5.7, and now I'm going to take a ruler and draw a line along there, and it's not a straight line, so I kind of go between segment and segment, it gets me in the ballpark. Also, when I'm done, I would like the um, the top to be where my sanding is, which is when you flip it over, it becomes the bottom. <laughs> it gets me all the time. And you want this flat, it you want this uneven edge, and hopefully it's not uneven too much to bat up, butt up against this flat part here. So I do my sanding on the top part here, and I leave my bottom unsanded straight. So when I'm done, the bottom is always straight, and then my sanded part with variation goes up against, like that. So flipping it over, it's just the reverse. I'm going to sand the right side, the correct side. So now I'm going to draw my lines, and we'll do some sanding. Now, as I look at this, i got it backwards again. If I want the bottom to be straight, I want the top to be sanded, therefore I want the bottom to be sanded. And I've got my top mark to be sanded, which is not what I want. So let me erase these and straighten it out, put it the way it should be. This is why I'm working on the back side, so however I mess this up, the top side looks pretty good. And that's what I've been doing along here. I've made mistakes. But if you do it all on the back, it's better. So let me pause and get these numbers straight. All right, I think I have it marked right this time. And then I take a couple of scrap pieces and lay it like this. Lay my ruler right along those little indentations with my caliper and highlight it by a pencil mark and mark that. My line. Then I take my exacto blade, which is set aside for splitting these rails. I have another one I use for trimming and carving. And I I don't go right to the line. Yeah, you can see I don't go right. I go close to the line to get a lot of the wood off. And then I'm going to sand it. So let's get rid of all this wood so I don't have to sand a lot or so much. And now what I'm going to do is I come across this real handy lightweight sander. And now I use this lightweight sander and sand this wood flat. And then I measure it frame by frame. And since this produces so much dust, less since I trimmed it, still dust, I bought this handy dandy filter that draws it out and I got a 0.3 micron filter in here and I'm changing it about every, I don't know, every so often when it gets full. And uh, here we go, let's trim this up a little bit. <clears throat> And 
uh, once I kind of get it flattened out, then I measure with my micrometer to make sure I'm larger than what I'm looking for. Sure enough, that's uh, like four tenths of a millimeter too much. This is a whole millimeter too much. Well, that's quite a bit more. And now I have the frame marks upside down and I got my little piece of paper here and I now very carefully go over one of these and think of this as kind of like a planer. If I hold it right and I lay this flat, I'm able to get a, let me, I don't know if you got a chance to see that or not, but I'm able to get a nice flat surface and as long as I keep track of my millimeters, like more than every frame, make it five times a frame, I measure the width, I get these very nice tight patterns and every now and then I get some variation and it ends up being a gap and I struggle with do I unglue it with some um, acetone which I've done once and didn't really like I can't fill the upper part of this deck because it's going to be natural but maybe down here where I'm going to be painting I'll be able to fill some of those gaps that's my hope in this final layer but up here I've been very good about or trying my best anyway to not have gaps because I'm not going to be able to fill it. I've been successful so far and it turns out this little handheld planer works really well for me. So I'm going to go and uh, carefully sand this flat. All right, I'm close on these two here. I might touch this, but I work my way down like that. And that's where this line comes in handy. When you're sanding, you can see where you're supposed to be going. And uh, it becomes tricky. Is Do you use the bottom of the pencil mark or the up? Did your pencil mark hit the dot just right? This is where the art comes in, and I'm still working on it. You'll have to figure out how you, if you choose to do this, how you'll do it. But my pencil lines aided me, and so I'll work my way down and get it all sanded. I got it trimmed pretty good all the way down. Now let's see if it fits. You flip it over. This is the. It lays right in there. And without the camera, I can get in closer, but I can see I got a little high spot there and there. And at the end, I got a little high spot. So this is where I start using my fine sandpaper. In fact, I've gotten good at looking at it, and I can see a high spot right there. I probably can't see it on the camera, but I can see it. So what I would do is, careful not to sand too much, I might have to start all over again. You lay it up there, and you get it that way, and that looks pretty good. Now I always, let me swing the camera around here a little bit. I always put more, this is where I'm going with my butt joint, but I always go a little longer. Because if I've made a mistake, I can always slide this down because all of these are too thick and I can re-sand them again. But if in the initial part, if you cut it just at the right spot and you make a mistake, there's no recovery. So you leave a little bit at the end so you can slide it down and, and recover and trim the end again and so forth. And I've learned that the hard way or having thrown some of these away. So now I'm going to uh, do the final hand sand to get it closer and lay up there like that. Okay, this looks like it fits pretty close up into there. I have to bend it up a little bit, and the glue will hold it in place. And this narrow piece of wood will take the flex, and there's hardly any gaps at all. So the next step, then, is to sand the back edge of this off so that the front part mates, but the back part has a gap, so when you push up, it mates better and nice and tight. So now, and I've sanded the wrong side more than once, I've got to sand this inside. And again, I use my little, you can use a hand sand, works just as good. See if you get that. Yeah. Now, with that little bevel, This, oh yeah, that fits nice and tight. Here's another one I've learned. Make sure you're on the starboard side and on the top part and you lay this in. Now, some of these planks have quite a bit of curvature here. This is flat, 
and this is at a different angle so there's an angle there and then these curve and so some of these are hard to lay in there and I've ended up putting super glue slow drying super glue all the way down and then I ended up getting some I don't know if you can see that but there's a big there'd be a big gap there not as bad as that but there'd be a gap there and it's glued down and what a pain so I've learned when I lay my glue, especially where there's a curve, up here at the flat part it wasn't so bad. And then I surprise, surprise, I found some issues down here. I just lay some dots of glue just about to where the curve is and then lay this in and glue it. And then once that's dried after about, you know, 45 seconds or a little longer, then I come in and glue the back part all the way. So it's a two-stage fair affair. And then when I'm gluing it, you see there's still a little gap there. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. I put all my fingers on here and pull it up tight and glue it in. And that then is the way I have been getting as tight a joint as I get. Probably not museum quality, but they're better than I've ever done. And I'm quite happy with this. So you lay a little bit in, you pull it in, you let it dry, and then you sometimes some of the skin comes off. I'm developing some callus. So here's the first bit. And before it really gets too dry, I run a, a little right angle wedge under there to wipe up some of that stuff and a q-tip seems to suck up some of this extra and then I'll put the second half on here which you can see whoops you can see is still flopping up and then I'll run a little sandpaper like 400 grit or whatever I got and touch it up and I'll do a fine I'll do a good sanding a thorough sanding job later on but I'm kind of cleaning as I go so let's put the the second layer on. Alright, I think that's it. By no means am I saying this is the right way to do it. I uh, progress and every time I learn something new, I do it differently. This just happens to be the way it's currently working for me. And I don't know if I can zoom in to see this or not. Let's try it. There's some little bit of gaps here and there. Oh, and there was uh, one more thing. I've uh, moved from my plank at the bow to working on the one on the stern and I've got it tailored like I had shown you before but here in the stern let me show you more carefully um, more carefully is where this is a very sharp corner much sharper than it was in the bow and so when I go to put this plank on part of to show you what I'm doing I lay the other plank I've been working on and as you lay it in here, it fits really nice, but you can see that there is clearly a curve needed or a spiling of some kind because this plank rides up here. Let me see if I can get a zoom in on that. The plank fits really nice here, but it rides up up here like this. And so what I do is where and show it in that video link I put down below where it starts to make its corner I put a little circle here and then I put a little arrow because I bent it the wrong way before saying I want this to bend down a little bit and that way you don't get such a rise in the lip here so I put a circle I put an arrow and then I take it over to my bending station So here's the part. It's sustained a bend. It's flat where I wanted it, and then it makes a curve here. I think you can see it rising up. See, there we go. It rises up a little bit. And it does fit a lot better on the boat. So it fits right in there nice. And it, the curve, it overlap is not as much. But it doesn't quite fit nice. It still rises up a little bit. And if I take a look and lay it flat, I didn't bend it enough so there's my circle I'm gonna put it back under the iron 
and iron it again and then I think with a little bit of force and glue that'll fit. So hopefully you get the idea. Not only do you just tailor the planks that fit in here in the nice even spots and I suspect that's the way it'll be here but where there's more curvature in addition to all that tailoring and and getting the them to a butt nice and flat there has to be a spile or an edge bent put to the end and in addition to everything that's what I, that's the last little bit I wanted to show you well, I'm down to it I got the last plank on this side to do I've uh, turned the corner and I'm pretty happy with all the tightness between the planks there's some gaps but they're all below the natural wood so I'll fill those and it probably won't show under the paint that's my hope and I bought up and planking from the, the keel up to where I've deduced I'm going to have a, a, a area here wider than a single plank. It's just a little bit of a gap there and I thought I might add an add plank in there but it's only a gap about that long and I can't find any, any walnut anywhere so I'm going to use a different color wood and uh, do a little strip in here and make it a little bit wider. I'm going to cut my own plank. And then when I seal it and paint it, it won't show. And so I'll have one plank running. I'll have one plank here, this extra wide plank there, then a standard plank there. And I've measured the gaps. They're kind of in line with them, um, with what's been going on. It was thick here and thick at the bottom, and then they kind of thin to the middle. And uh, I've measured them with my micrometer. And it's uh, 0.36 all the way up to about... 7.7 .7 here at the wide and these planks are only 6.2 so but I'm down to it and I'm excited to be done then I'm going to sand it and um, I'm not going to paint it I have to put rubbing strikes on here so I still got a ways to go but the planking might be done oh this has been a long time I've been at it a couple of months to do the double layer planking uh, I'll show you both sides when I'm finished let me show you what I'm doing with this last plank Rather than trimming this down to measurements, I'm getting it close and then I'm sliding the plank in and I'm trimming it, sanding it should I say, down so that it um, fits the groove. So I fit it in, pull it out and sand it a little bit more and I know if I sand too much, as this gets wider and wider and wider, if I hold a straight line it's going to have a big gap up here and I've had to do a few of these. You see that gap? Well there's really not there. If I slide it forward you see it fits just right. <clears throat> but I've had to redo a few of these because the gap got too big. So I think, I think if I can stand this up a little bit better, that might be better. I've got it sanded to where this fits right in. And if you lay it flat, when it's in my lap or the camera's not rolling, it fits in here much nicer. And it goes all the way across with very few gaps. So there we go. That will be the last plank to be glued in. And because it's so thin... I suppose I could bend it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to glue it and fit it that way. And that will be the first of three planks here. This one will fit here to, to frame five. Then I'll do one over here from 11 to frame eight. And then this is one I'm going to spile and cut my plank a little thicker. It'll be kind of a little narrow section right there. And that'll be my last plank for this side. Then... I repeat, I only have two more planks over here, and I'll do that again. Well, I think this is going to conclude part one of the video. I finished the planking. It's all done. There's still some work to be done in the hole. i got to do a thorough job of sanding. I did a little bit of sanding along the way, and I, I practiced some sanding here on the bow to see how that works, and, uh, and I sanded some of this down. And uh, I'm quite happy with it, but I got to put some rubbing strakes on. I got to choose a color scheme for the bottom and paint it. That's how the instructions go. I guess when you get a bunch of gear in the deck, you don't want to be turning it upside down and painting it. So that's probably the right way to do it. Paint it next. So I'll do some work on the beginning of the next video, and then we'll come to the deck and we'll do that. As you can see, there's a stripe here. I looked everywhere for walnut planks or sheets of walnut and I couldn't find any that would be done in my time frame. There was some on Amazon but they didn't have the right color on the, on the screen. I prefer to buy them at local stores and they were all real thick. I didn't want to sand it down too much. So I ended up buying, using some basswood sheets and put that in there because it's a little bit thicker. It looks kind of funny but 
And I really was reluctant to do that, but it works good. It'll be sealed and uh, sanded and uh, painted, so it won't show. And um, it's been a fun so far. Uh, boy, I got some experience with planking. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you guys uh, be good until uh, I come back for part two. I'll see you in three or four months. God bless. And see you around. Bye-bye.